Shalom, shalom. Welcome to King James Bible University, San Antonio. As we get ready to get started, we're going to take a look at this verse here. As we get ready to deal with uh, the truth behind Antioch and kill these lies of these false prophets. All right. So let's pick up in the book of Acts chapter 11, verse 26. This is where Henry started to read and he gave his diatribe and you saw that in my introduction video. So here it goes. And when he had found him, he brought him speaking Barnabas bringing Saul, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, the assembly and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Now he makes a claim that this is the new name that God calls his people. That claim cannot be substantiated because just right here in this verse, who's calling them? It's talking about people in Antioch. So you have to know the history of Antioch. Okay. Many Christians don't know the history of Antioch. They'll call them their own assemblies, Antioch Missionary Baptist or Antioch Pentecostal or something like that. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at this and let's back this up just a moment and look at Barnabas. It says, now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, remember after Stephen was killed in Jerusalem, they traveled as far as Phoenix, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word of God to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene. These were Hebrews who were there in those lands, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians. We're going to find out who the Grecians in this thing here. Preaching the Lord Jesus. Preaching the creator salvation. And the hand of the creator was upon them or was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the creator. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church, the assembly, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Who, when he came and had seen the grace, the mercy of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they should cleave unto the creator for he was a good man and full of the holy ghost and of faith and much people were added unto the creator verse 25 then departed barnabas to tarsus why because who's in tarsus saul who we know as brother paul and when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch. We have to focus on the history of Antioch here. And it came to pass that a whole year they were assembled themselves with the church. That means with the assembly of the people in Antioch who were hearing the message of Christ sent forth by these brethren and taught much people, precept on precept, line upon line. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. This is not a this term Christian is not a badge of honor. It is a put down. So let's go look at Antioch. And to do that, we got to go to a book that these brothers have never read. And it's in the Apocrypha, which is a part of the King James Bible. And we got to go to 1 Maccabees chapter 1. If you're going to understand the background of what we're reading in Acts, you have to go back to the foundation and you got to see these Greeks. All right. So let's pick up in 1st Maccabees 1 1. And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead over first over Greece. Now remember, Henry said that in Antioch, the place where God called people Christians, which is not true, it was the first time where full blooded Gentiles and Jews were together, which is a lie. So 
the key for first here or key word here in first Maccabees one one is the land of Chittim or Kittim. Same word. It's going to be spelled different in Genesis, but it is the same word. Let's go to Genesis chapter 10. Let's look at these full-blooded Gentiles, first of all, and get them out of the way. And it says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. We know what that flood is, all these strange doctrines. All right. Like when the serpent opened his mouth in the book of Revelations, I believe chapter 12, and out came a flood. Now, it says the sons of Japheth. So these are the true Gentiles. These are the full-blooded full Gentiles. Okay. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tiris. And the sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, interesting, Rifath, Togama, and the sons of Javan, where the Greeks come from, were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, which is the same as the Kittim we saw in 1 Maccabees 1.1. 1, 1. It's spelled different, but it's the same thing, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided into in their lands, everyone after his tongue, and after their families in their nations. So God has separated the sons of Japheth, called them Gentiles, and scattered them and moved them away from the sons of Ham and the sons of uh, Shem. He pushed them away. And so you have to do your studies, Henry, and find out why he pushed them away. Because there's something about these Gentiles that doesn't groove with the spirit of the Most High. So he pushed them away. So let's go back to 1 Maccabees, chapter number one, and look at the sons of Kittim, who come from Javan. So 1 Maccabees, we see the Greeks. This is where we see the Greek invasion and the Greek captivity. As we read earlier, it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius king of the Persians and the Medes, that's during the time of Daniel, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. All right. The Greeks, Babylon is a head of gold. The silver is the Medes and Persians. The brass is the Greeks. All right. They pull these books out of the Bible in 1885 to keep this information away from you, all right? They pulled the bridge out. There's a bridge between the old, what they call the Old Testament, and then in Malachi, Genesis to Malachi, and the New Testament, beginning in Matthew to Revelations. There is no 400 years of silence. The Apocrypha were those books those, that bridge, those 14 books that bridge the gap. They gave the information there is no gap theory. That is the fabrication of men. If you want to learn about the Greeks, you got to go to the Maccabees. And so Antioch is based on these people. So we got to read this information. All right. So Alexander made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. And went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations in so much that the earth was quiet before him. Whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings and who became tributaries unto him. After these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Verse six, wherefore he called his servants, such as were honorable, and they had, excuse me, and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. You can go study the Greek empires, you'll know that. So Alexander reigned 12 years, then he died. And his servants bear rule, everyone in his place. And check this out, verse nine, we're gonna to get to something here about these Greeks. And after his death, after the death of Alexander, they put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And look at this point, and evils were multiplied in the air. So when the Greeks, the Gentiles get control, they set up their kingdom to rule over the world and rule over Israel. The children of 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It says evils were multiplied in the earth. So the Gentiles bring a multiplication of evils in the earth. Now let's keep reading. Here we come to see Antiochus or Antiochus, as some say. Verse 10, and there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, the king who had been hostage in Rome. He reigned in the 130 and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Now during the reign of Antiochus Epiphanes, who was worshiped as a god in flesh by these heathens, it says in those days, there were out of Israel wicked men. So wicked men in Israel joined these Greeks who persuaded many saying, let us go make a covenant with the heathen. The heathen are the Greeks, the kingdom of the Greeks led by Antiochus. So there's a wicked Israelites who said, come let us make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward here in Tamad Israel that they went to the king. So certain Israelites went to the heathen who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. So they didn't follow the way of the Lord. They did after the ordinance of the heathen. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 10, 2 for a minute. Many times, brothers of poor is dealing with this Christmas and all these foolish festivals that the heathen has given us. But let's just hear this verse, Jeremiah 10, 2. Thus saith the Spirit of God. Let's back up 10, 1. Hear the word which the Spirit of God speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So he's speaking to Israel, speaking to us. Thus saith the Spirit of God, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed of them. The thing we want to deal with is here. One verb, one part. Learn not the way of the heathen. So when we get back to 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, we see something. It says, Verse 13, then certain of the people, these men who were so-called leaders, these false leaders, they were among Israel. They were so wicked that they went to the king. They went to Antiochus, and he gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Whereupon, they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem, according to the customs of the heathen, and made themselves uncircumcised. So they took themselves out of the agreement, out of the oath in Exodus 19, 5 through 8, and out of the covenant in Deuteronomy 10, 12. And what did they do? They forsook the holy covenant. These were Israelites joining to be Gentiles of the mind and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Now, when the kingdom was established for Antiochus or Antiochus, he thought to reign over Egypt that he might have the dominion of two realms. So from the jump, we know that Antiochus is not a good guy. And we know that Antioch is named after this man. And we're going to prove that to you real shortly here. Let's move on down and see some of the works of Antiochus. Verse 20, and after Antiochus had spent Egypt, he returned again a hundred in the 140 and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. So he's attacking Israel and entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlesticks of light and all the vessels thereof. These are full-blooded Gentiles, Henry doing this. And the table of the showbread and the pouring vessels and the vials and the censers of gold and the veil and the crown and the golden ornaments that were before the temple all which he pulled off. He took the silver and the gold and the precious vessels. You can go do your studies and find out what those things are. He also took the hidden treasures which he found. Verse 24 is crucial. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land. Greece, having made a great massacre, he slaughtered the people of God and spoken very proudly. Therefore, there was great mourning in Israel in every place where they were. So they were slaying the Israelites. Verse 26, so that the princes and elders mourned, the virgins, the young men were made weak 
and the beauty of women was changed. Every bridegroom took up lamentation and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaven. That's why, because the men were destroyed, they were killed. The land was also moved for the inhabitants thereof and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. Confusion. So when we followed the Greeks and the Greeks began to slaughter us, we entered into great misery and confusion. Let's move down. These Greeks began to do good things like this. It says, for that in the place they lay in wait against the sanctuary and they are an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they shed the innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it. They were killing the priests. It's in so much that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of, the, because of them, some of the Greeks, the Antiochians, whereupon the city was made a habitation of the strangers. The heathens began to rule and became strange to those that were born in her and her own children left her. Speaking of Jerusalem, her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feast were turned into mourning, her Sabbaths into reproach, her honor into contempt. Now, once Antiochus did this and conquered, it says in verse 41, Moreover, King Antiochus or Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that they all should be one people, and we will always have foolish people who will sell out to these heathens. Verse 42, and everyone, this is the law he put in, in place. And remember, he's conquered the whole world. So he's ruling over other heathens and other folk, and he's now conquered Israel. And this is everyone to leave his laws. Now, who is he talking to? The heathen will worship anything. So he, this law is directed toward the Israelites, the Hebrews. And everyone to leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. So when you follow the custom of Antioch or Antiochus, you are following his religion. And then we would begin to be sacrificed. We would begin to follow these devils and sacrifice on idols and profane the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by the messengers of Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Instead of following the commandment of God, in the oath of the Most High, we were compelled by force to follow the strange laws of the heathen. And what were some of these laws? They forbid, they forbid burnt offerings, sacrifice, and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. And they polluted the sanctuary and the holy people. They set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrificed to swine's flesh and unclean beast. And as we, many of our people followed them, that they, the Israelites who followed these heathens, should leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable, most hateful, with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. What is the, what is the purpose of Antiochus' laws? To the end that Israel might forget the law of God. So it says to the end that they might forget the law, meaning the law of God, and change all ordinances. And here's the, here it is. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. In the self-same manner, he wrote to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit everyone that forsook the law became Gentiles. So they committed evils in the land. So if you forsook the law, you follow the Gentiles, you become a Gentile out of mine, you'll be known as a Grecian. I'll prove that to you. You'll also be known as an Antiochian. So this is what Antiochus is doing. And this is the root of the city of Antioch and the, and the ways of Antioch. And it says, and they drove the Israelites into secret places, those who wanted to keep the covenant, even whosoever would flee for secure. All right. Now let's move down. It says, now in the 15th year of the month, Castle in the 145th year, they set up an abomination of desolation. This is what the heathen did. And Henry going to tell us that these Gentiles are now joined under Christ. Man, you're crazy. They set up the abomination of desolation to build at altar, idol altars throughout the cities of Judah. And Paul tells us in Corinthians that the Gentiles worship devils, all right? And they burned incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. And when they had rent the pieces of the books of the law, so they, their purpose was to destroy the records of the word of God. 
which they found they burnt them with fire. And that's why the spirit of God moved Ezra to write again. And whosoever was found with any book of the Testament or any committed to the law of God, the king commandment was that he should be put to death. These are what the Gentiles did. So if they found you keeping the commandments of the Most High over the ways of the flesh, over the ways of the Gentiles who worship devils, you would be put to death. Thus did they by their authority unto the Israelites every month. So they were killing. Here's an example. It says, at which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. And they hang the infants about their necks and rifle their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. Howbeit, many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore, they chose rather to die that they might not be defiled with the doctrine, the meats, and that which might be profane, that which they might not profane the holy covenant. So they died. And there was great sorrow and great wrath upon Israel. There was great wrath upon Israel, very great wrath. But Henry, I have you to believe, brothers and sisters, that God took these heathens who were destroying his people and made them one. He's an unlearned man. Let's move on. Let's check out 2 Maccabees. I don't want to be with you too long. Second Maccabees, chapter number four. We're going to deal with Antiochus. Second Maccabees, chapter four. Let's see. Let's see here. Verse number seven. After the death of Seleucus, who was one of the friends of Alexander the Great, and this word Antiochus comes under from the Seleucian kings. When Antiochus called Epiphanes took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be high priest. So you had Jason, who was, who was a fool, joining with the heathen. Just like Henry wants you to do. It's foolishness. All right. Promising unto the king by intercession 303 score talents of silver and to another revenue 80 talents. Besides this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have a license to set up, set him up a place for exercise. That goes back to that worshiping of idols. And for the training up of youth. See, they want to get the youth in the fashion of the heathen, and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. So Antiochus, I mean, uh, Antioch is named after the king Antiochus, and this wicked Jason is writing to have this, the, the, the real people of God in Jerusalem to be called Antiochians instead of being who they are, having a full Greek identity. And Henry wants you to believe that Antiochus or Antioch is a place of holiness and it's not. Now let's read about these Antiochians in this character of, of Jason under Antioch or and under uh, Antiochus's rule. It says, which when the king had granted, so Antiochus or Anti Antiochus granted Jason this ability to rule and force many of the Israelites to do this, which the, when the king had granted, he had gotten into his hand, his power, the rule. He fought with, brought his own nation. So Jason brings his own nation, Israel, to Greekish fashion. And you'll see there's a big push among our people even today in these universities to follow Greekish fashions in these frats. And I got videos under King James Bible University, San Antonio, that'll break that stuff down. All right. It's madness. Verse 11. And the royal privilege is granted for special favors to the Jews by means of John, the father of Eponymus, who went 
ambassador to Rome for amnesty and aid he took away and putting down the governments which were according to the law. He brought up new customs against the law, the law of God, all right? So Jason does his work. For he gladly built a place of exercise under the tower itself. You know, the Greeks with their Olympics and all their disgusting behaviors. And he brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them to wear a hat. Now, such was the height of Greekish fashions and increase of heathenish manners. This is what's going on in, Anti in Antioch. Gre Greekish fashions, height of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest, that the priest had no courage to serve anymore at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices the, the, the sacrifices, what sacrifices we represent? Our bodies. So they weren't able to do the work. They hastened to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus called them forth. And this is where our people fall prey even today. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, who were their fathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today, we don't even know our fathers, so we'll follow guys like Martin Luther King and that moron mentality, all right? And he led us into these things here in America by liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers whose customs they followed so earnestly. So Israel is now caught up in this whirlpool following the customs of the heathen. And remember, the most high told us in Jeremiah 10 2, learn not the way of the heathen, unto whom they desire to be like in all things. And that's the main problem now. We're living as Gentiles. For it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the laws of God. And those laws are Deuteronomy 10 12, Leviticus 19 8, 17, 18. For it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the laws of God, but the time following shall declare these things. All right. Thus ungracious Jason sent special messengers from Jerusalem who were Antiochians. So these messengers were Hebrews who had converted to Gentile minds, Antiochians, also known as Grecians, to carry 300 drachmas of silver to the sacrifice of Hercules. So instead of worshiping the Holy One of Israel, they're worshiping Greek gods, Greek culture, Greek fashion, which even the bearers thereof thought fit not to bestow upon the sacrifice because it was not convenient, but to be reserved for other charges. Thus, it says, this money then in regard of the sender was appointed to Hercules sacrifice, so they're sacrificing on the devil, so I'm going to show you. But because of the bearers thereof, it was employed into making galleys. And let's go to the book of First Corinthians. Ten. Speaking of these Gentiles, these Greeks, and what we got from them. But I say that the things with the Gentiles, the haters of God, heathens, Sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot, Henry, listen here, 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Ye cannot drink of the cup of the Lord, of the creator, and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Okay. Let's go back and look at what the table of these devils. Let's go back to 2 Maccabees chapter 6. This man would have us believe that God received these people and they joined Israel, became the church. It's buffoonery. All right, let's look at this. 2 Maccabees 6 1. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews, those who were not following the heathen were following the ways of the Lord 
to depart from the laws of their fathers, from the laws of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the law of Moses, and not to live after the laws of their God. That's what the Jew, that's what the Greeks do. This is what this spirit of Antioch is going to move you from following the laws of your fathers and laws of God to follow the laws of flesh, the ways of the Greeks. Let me read that again. Not long after this, the king, Antiochus, sent an old man to Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. And that would that king could be Antiochus, it could be uh, Ptolemy, same heathen, same Greeks, same people. Verse two, and to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem. Now remember, God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, so that temple is your Hebrew body, my brother, my sister, if we flip this spiritually. So is it, and to pollute the temple of, in Jerusalem and call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of the strangers as they did desire that dwelt in the place. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. Why? Because they were accustomed to the laws of God. But here we have the heathen flipping it for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles. Those heathens who came and took control and those Hebrews who joined them and became Antiochians who dally with harlots, unclean spirits, false spirits, false doctrine. If you look at it spiritually, if you look at it naturally, they made it a whorehouse, i.e. these modern day churches and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy place. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. The altar was also filled with the profane things which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feast, or ancient fast rather, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew, which means a follower of Christ. And in the day of the king's birth every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices and when the fast of Bacchus was kept, that, that is a heathen celebration, like New Year, the Jews were compelled to go in in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. You remember, all these heathens' laws are going to come against you if you follow the way of Christ, the way of the word, the way of the covenant against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. Here it goes. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles should be put to death. Talking about the full-blooded Gentiles. Then might a man have seen the present misery. Let's keep reading. For there were two women brought who were circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led around about the city, the babes hanging on at their breasts, they cast them down headlong off from a wall. And others that had run together in the caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly being discovered by Philip, that wicked sellout, were all burnt together. So they burnt and murdered those who followed Christ because they had made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. So that's why they'll have you stuck on Sunday worship and, and, and violating the Sabbath because they want to get us killed spiritually. Let me keep reading. Now I beseech those that read the book that they be not discouraged of these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for the chastening of our nation. Now we know why we're in this mess because we forsook the covenant, but we have to go through it. But you see the works of these heathens, they are not fulfilling, they are not uh, serving God, they're serving their flesh, they're serving the devil, they're committing evils against the people of God. I want to find this one about the old man. This, yeah. Second Maccabees 6. Here it is. Look what they did. This is Eleazar, one of the principal scribes. He was a holy man. 
man of God, was an aged man and of well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh with these heathens trying to force this priest or this scribe in the house of Levi to eat because he was an example to the people. They're trying to break the will of the people so if they can get this old man to, to follow their course, then the people will follow the course. So they're constraining him to eat swine's flesh, which is unclean, which is abominable, which is a violation of the covenant. But he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to be tormented. As it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as an unlawful for love of life to be tasted. Keep, check this out. But they that had charge of that wicked feast, the feast of the heathen, for old acquaintances had they with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision. So they were trying to compel him. Well, if you don't want to eat our filthy flesh, our filthy doctrines, then bring your own, but fake it like it's ours, such as was lawful for him to use and make as if he did eat the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king, that in so doing, he might be delivered from death. So will you save your flesh? for the old friendship with them find favor. But he began to consider discreetly and as become his age and the excellency of his ancient years and the honor of his gray head, whereon was come and his most honest education from a child or rather the holy law made and given by God to Israel. Therefore he answered accordingly and willing and willed them straight ways to send him to the grave. And that's what Eleazar said. He said, for it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being fourscore years old and 10, he was 90 years old, were now gone to strange religion. And so they through my hypocrisy and desire to live in this flesh a little time and a moment longer should be deceived by me and I get a stain on my old age and make it abominable. But though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive or dead. Wherefore now manfully changing his life, I will show myself such as one as mine age requireth and leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. They that led him, changing the good, will they bear him a little before into hatred? Because the foresaid speeches proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, it is manifest unto the creator that hath the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure my sore pains in my body by beating, but in soul am well content to suffer those things because I fear or desire him. Thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of noble courage and a memorial, a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation, Israel. So let's get back to Acts. 11. The Gentiles, the Antiochians, those in Antioch, that's the history of Antioch, they were the enemies of Israel. They hated the covenant of God. They hated the ways of God. They compelled Hebrews to blaspheme and to either die or save their flesh and follow, follow the way of the heathen. And this man would have you believe that God chose these heathens, the full-blooded Gentiles, to become in the covenant. So here he goes. This is this is where, where uh, Henry picked this thing up. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. Now, we saw the history of Antioch. Antioch's history is found in the, in the book of the Apocrypha and most certainly in the 
a, the books, first and second Maccabees, go read that. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. So what Paul and them were doing to Antioch was getting people who had the mind of Gentiles out, Hebrews who were living as Gentiles out of that Gentile mind. And the, the, and the people who call them Christians or Antiochians. The word Christian comes from the word Cretan. Let's see it. Cretan, okay. The English language has no shortage of cruel names for people. And one of them is Cretan, which is what you'd call someone who was a very, very dumb in the head. Back before Cretan meant a stupid person, it was a medical term for a physical deformity that came from a specific disease. Surprisingly, the root of Cretan is the Swiss French word Creston, which means Christian. It seems that people back then wanted to be reminded themselves that even though Cretans looked unusual, they're still humans who deserve kindness. Now, if we get all of that, but we want to know that the word Cretan comes from, it means dumb in the head. It means stupid. It means mad. And the scriptures will prove it. And that's where we get the word Christian. So if we go back to the book of Acts, they were not calling them something honorable because Christian is Cretan. Okay, let's go to Titus 1.12. So Henry messing up. He says, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, prophet of the Cretans, said the Cretans, Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. They are unruly, vain talkers, deceivers. All right? That's what they are. That's what that dude Henry is saying. He's a vain talker and a deceiver. They were called Christians because they were putting them down, saying they're stupid for believing the message that the apostles were pushing, that you could leave Greekish ways and come back to your covenant and kill your flesh and die and your spirit be renewed in the covenant. And that the man, Yahweh, the prophet, came and did the same, being an example to Israel. And that a man should rise from the dead. That's what they were calling them foolish for believing. So when we get to Acts chapter 26, Paul is accused of being the same thing. Agrippa tells Paul, Acts 2610, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuades me to be a Christian, to be mad. Proof, let's back it up. What was Paul's message? His message was, and he speaks here, whereupon o King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the vision, heavenly vision, but showed first them unto Damascus and at Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea, then to the Gentiles. Now, these Gentiles were Hebrews who were living like Gentiles, not the full-blooded heathen sons of Japheth that Henry talking about because God has never dealt with them, that they should repent, that they should repent, should remember. A full-blooded Gentile was never in a covenant with God, so what can he remember? And turn to God and do the works of repentance, the works of remembrance. But these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. That Christ, which is the word, which is found in uh, Wisdom of Solomon 1815, should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light or knowledge unto the people and to the Gentiles, the people of God who were living as heathens, right? And as he thus spake of himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. You crazy man, 
much learning have made thee mad. He's calling him a Christian. You're stupid. You're mad. You're crazy. But he said, I am not mad, stupid, or crazy. He, he's renouncing that Christian tag, most noble Festus, but speak for the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth these things before whom I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. Then King Agrippa says, he says, King Agrippa putting a grip on, the, <laughs> on Front Street, King Agrippa believes thou the prophets. Agrippa was familiar with the laws of and the prophecies and the word of God pertaining in the covenant pertaining to Israel. He says, I know thou believest. Then Agrippa says to Paul, you almost persuade me to be crazy like you. So he ain't calling him something honorable. Okay, Henry. So that deals with that point. Let's go. I don't want to be here too long. Let's go to Henry then pulled Isaiah uh, 60. Is it 62? Isaiah 62. Let's pull that. This is where he lies the second time. The big blasphemy. He pulls this verse and he says, And Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name. See, that's the name God called his people, Christians, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. There is nowhere in the Bible where God called his people Christians. Now, this word, let's back it up. It says, For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until righteousness, truth thereof go forth as brightness and salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles, those Hebrews who want to remain as heathens, shall see thy righteousness. And those full-blooded Gentiles, they're going to see how righteous when Christ redeems those who continue to the end and all the kings shall glory and they shall be caught. And thou, he's speaking to Zion. All right. He's speaking to Gentiles. He's speaking to Zion. He says, and Zion, thou shall be called by a new name. That name, that word name means way. That new way is a way of Christ, which the mouth of the spirit of God shall name. It ain't called Christians. It's the way of Christ. All right. And remember, Henry. And we go to Psalms 147. You calling God a liar. Talking about he did that with these full blooded Gentiles. It says he showeth his word unto Jacob. And his statutes and his judgments under Israel, that means doctrine and teachings. He have not dealt so with any nation. He haven't dealt with the sons of Japhet. He haven't dealt with Kittim. He haven't dealt with Javan. He haven't dealt with those nations. And as for his judgments, his doctrine and teachings, these heathens, they have not known them. Praise ye the spirit of God. So when you get the Acts 11, 26 and put for if your false doctrine, your false teaching, you're calling God a lie, you're proven to be a blasphemer, and you're going to be judged for that. But my brother and my sister, don't listen to these fools. Come out of these whorehouses. Come out of these prison houses where all these falsities are. And let's keep walking in this truth. I don't want to keep you too long. This is Elder Fields at King James Bible San Antonio. I'm closing this thing out. I wanted to keep it short. The Church of Christ and those three guys and those who follow the doctrines of Christianity, no matter the denomination, they're fools because they don't know the precepts. They don't know the commandments. They don't know what God is talking about. They don't even know who they really are. And God has told us to come out from among them and be separate. All right. So this is Phil signing off. The King James Bible University of San Antonio dropping out. A great shalom to you. Have a good evening. Shalom.